I'm afraid I might run out of time anyway. So uh, the first part of my lecture is about mobile phone culture in Japan. So this is something you know very well. Uh, you're here, and here's my mobile phone. Unfortunately, uh, of course, it's uh, I can't use it here. It's out of the, the kind of uh, user area, and this is already a kind of old model from the point of view of what we can do with mobile phones. And uh, so the question here is, what is mobile phone in Japanese? Kei we call it's mobile means in Japan in terms of its features and in terms of uh, things that you have, you possess, and you use for communication. So I got some images with the mobile phones here. This is a recent advertisement for a Hitachi phone. And uh, I took this photo from station, uh, from the Shinjuku station, where they had these posters. All, so all the way along the corridors, it's this kind of glamorous look. So here, mobile phone is, how to say, um, treated as a bullet going through the upper, inst inst I mean, it's, it's an instant. So this is uh, features. This is a kind of mobile phone version of a well-known photo, this stroboscopic photo, which was originally uh, taken at the MIT. Uh, I don't remember when, but it's a kind of well-known photo which is now converted into the advertisement of mobile phone. And it kind of gives an idea how mobile phone is regarded as an image. And this is something funny. I got it also from a poster that I found at the station. Uh, this is a poster for the uh, competition or for sending email as quick as possible. <laughs> Uh, Japanese people are known for the, the, the very versatile sort of skills in using this um, small keyboard. And uh, this competition took place two years ago in a uh, kind of um, suburban theme park. So people who visited the theme park on that day were all invited to uh, participate in this competition. So just be a given text uh, from the organizer and you start sending the email, and the first person who sent the email successfully, uh, successfully would get the award. And here, I got this picture on the right uh, from someone. So she's um, at the vacation on the uh, summer cottage of her parents, and now she's enjoying this um, fireworks and using this camera on her mobile phone, she's sending the image to her friends. Actually, um, I don't believe the image here, but when this millennium thing was taking place, you know, everyone got together on the uh, last day of the year of uh, year uh, 1999, I noticed there are quite a few people who brought, of course, the mobile phone to send the uh, images of the fireworks and uh, all sorts of things happening to those people who couldn't participate in that kind of celebration. For example, friends who were living in the countryside and so on. But and eventually, because there are so many people who were there gathering, so some people started seeing what is going on through their cameras. So it, not only sending that, but it, one could fit like this, because, you know, <laughs> For those people who are not tall enough, they, they couldn't see it. And the image on the left is an advertisement I found somewhere for this, um, how to say, sound capability, sound feature of certain mobile phones. Because in Japan, the uh, one of the popular applications for mobile phones is karaoke. So you can download karaoke from the karaoke website. Uh, even with the latest, you know, hit chat sort of things. And it's very comfortable because when you're waiting for friends at the station, for example, you can secretly practice your karaoke there. Or you can enjoy a kind of karaoke party, even outdoor or indoor with your friends. And to have this very nice karaoke feeling, you have to have this harmony available on mobile phones. So it's just a kind of single tune capability is not enough. And also the downloading the hit chat is a big business in Japan. So this is about the sound. Uh, this is another advertisement 
I saw, I just found at the station. And nothing really special, but this is about your photography that you can take. And some advertisement. Uh, this is a very popular singer, uh, Japanese singer, who used to live in New York. And the same say, singer, a kind of celebrity. Uh, and you can see this kind of very stylish uh, advertisement on mobile phone in Japan everywhere. And you can see people using mobile phone, but not for speaking, but like this. So she might be checking email or uh, checking some information like the latest train to bring her back home. Uh, this is something that people very often use uh, as the service on mobile phones. Once I was taking a late night train from Osaka to Tokyo and for some, because of some accident, the train was late. And I noticed uh, someone, a businessman, who was actually sitting next to me, started using his mobile phone to check the connection, the connecting train. And when the train conductor came, he asked the conductor that he could change this uh, ticket uh, reservation for the connecting train to what he found as a possible connection. And the conductor said, sorry, I have to go back to my compartment to, and uh, connect to the computer to see the uh, if it can be, can work or not. And he said, no, 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 I know it works, it's here. And the conductor still insisted, oh, no, I have to contact the con computer. And 15 minutes later, he came back and said, yes, you were right, you can take this train. So now <laughs> the passengers can uh, get latest information better than the conductors. And this is a kind of scene that you find every day in Japan. So maybe she's listening to music or um, engine game, and you see that almost everyone is using mobile phone like this. And before in Japan on the trains, we, we had very often this announcement saying that please don't use speak to the mobile phone in the train because it's, uh, it, is, it disturbs other people. And these days we don't even hear that kind of announcement very often because almost no one is using mobile phone like this, but using like this very quietly. And for example here, a uh, young couple they are maybe enjoying, say, games, I don't know, or something like this. And uh, this is the uh, virtual dating club, dating service on mobile phone. So this is a virtual, what is called virtual idol in Japan. It's uh, originally sort of created as, uh, kind of, uh, as a designer, as a virtual idol uh, who appear on advertisement and other kind of things. So now she's on mobile phone, mobile phone server. So those people who want to uh, enjoy this virtual dating can um, call the server, talk to her, of course, on a text basis. So you can chat, of course, it's an automatic chat program, chat robot kind of thing. And uh, you can suggest her where and when uh, they would go and meet. And then if it works well, and then she will call you back on mobile phone. So you get a phone call from this virtual idol, and you go for a park or say picnic or something like that, and chat during that time. And if she's happy with, uh, with your conversation, she will say, well, let's meet next week. But if you're not very good, then uh, she'll get furious and you have to find another virtual girl. And I looked for some information about these services on, on the web, on the net, and uh, it was kind of interesting to see, for example, some men, of course, usually, I guess it's men, uh, saying that, uh, well, he says, I'm married, but you know, men wants to have some kind of uh, adventure sometimes, but it's too risky to, do, to have affairs with real women, and my wife will be furious. So this is a very safe way, and, but I still find kind of how this uh, realistic feeling, sort of. And so everyone is happy, so I think it's a good service, that's what he says. And yeah, like this. And this is an advertisement about this uh, photograph, uh, camera and sending photo on mobile phones. And here, this text here, it says, uh, we are already 
close to each other, you know, next to each other. So by taking photo of oneself and sending it to the other, the person, the partner, the friend, then so this advertisement promotes that all the kind of sort of virtual reality feeling is there, that you're away, but you're almost next to each other. And this is uh, another version of the same advertisement. And here she says, I tried to fly to you, and she's jumping for, for joy. And uh, she's, she's sending her photo, I mean, kissing virtually, and uh, he's jumping up with joy. So, <laughs> and uh, he's sending, this guy is sending his apology to this lady, to a girl, maybe probably because he's one of those typical Japanese businessmen, so maybe he uh, couldn't make the uh, dinner together, something like that. Uh, it's, it sounds very probable. And, well, with this, actually, you can't really get the idea, but these are, for example, photos I got from mobile phones. So you can see the color and resolution is actually fairly good, and it's from the old model. So now it's getting much better. And as you can see from the image left, just some kind of say, image processing at the edge, and now this kind of function is getting even better and better. So actually, so this is related to uh, still very popular uh, kind of uh, image, visual entertainment, uh, what you call this uh, small photography you can take, take at a booth. Uh, I saw it once in Santa Monica, they have this kind of thing that you take your photo and it uh, prints out a small seal and you can exchange. And there are some even Japanese artists who use that kind of system to make his own work. But anyway, so it is also connected to that kind of existing technology and entertainment so that you, you can combine your own photo or other photo with uh, some text or some decoration and send it to other people. So instead of exchanging uh, printed seals, you can exchange it uh, using telecommunication. And here, and now we have this, uh, this telephones, mobile phones with video possibilities. So you can shoot and send video after three minutes. And this is the advertisement I found about this uh, video possibilities. So you see that here, there are two actually images out of ghostly, but uh, this art came with the lenticular surface, lenticular film on the, on the poster. So according to the position of your head or your eyes, so you could see this uh, movement on this poster. So this is what the advertisement. So if you um, have a baby, for example, you can shoot a video and immediately send it to grandma or grandfather. That, so like that. And actually, so these days, this use of the lenticular surface, lenticular film that you can see the images from both sides. Uh, how many of you know this lenticular films? Yes, some of you know, yeah. So these are kind of, say, um, small lenses, uh, how to say, uh, matrix of lens on the surface. And because, um, how should I explain? Um, it's like the, uh, some of the, I don't have the images here. The advertisement you can see on the kind of triangle colors, uh, as matrix. And if you have images on left side and right side, uh, which, how say, uh, are continuous, which is continuous from seeing from the right or from the left, then you can see how say, uh, you can show two different images, or sometimes three, as you pass by in front of that. You see it sometimes. I once saw it. Uh, in front of some uh, automata of um, Georgia coffee, something like that. Anyway, so that's kind of similar technology. And these days, so the mobile phone, some of some models come with that kind of lenticular films. And they provide with a uh, software I had that by using that, you can make stereo photo and you send them the stereo photography to your friend. And so if you, your friend has this lenticular film, because 
did some image for your right eye and left eye are sort of stripped in very narrow columns and joined together. So you can only see the, uh, from your left eye, uh, the left image and right eye, uh, right image. So you can see the uh, stereoscopic image. So this uh, stereoscopic photography is also possible on mobile phones. And so actually I checked some catalogs and uh, it seems these are the kind of features now you can find on mobile phones. Uh, by the way, so when you, if you have any questions, please interrupt me. I know <laughs> I have a very bad habit of just talking and talking. So, so of course, um, you usually don't find all these features on, on one single mobile phone if you have it be maybe too big. But many mobile phones come with the combination of certain things. So now, your color is quite good, and the screens are getting larger and larger. And uh, often, because of this um, camera feature, because people thought, if you want to take camera, take photo, you, you need to check how it would look like on the screen. And also, you need to, sometimes you want to take photo of somewhere there. So very often now, the mobile phone comes with what they call sub-screen, which means there are screens on both sides. One as a major screen, the other for the checking the photography, for example, or some other purposes. And camera, which usually is here, you look at it here, can either turn around, or there are two lenses on both sides, and you can switch from this, this way or that way. And how to add this uh, camera is very useful in Japan. I don't think it would be so easy for you to imagine why. Um, if you are visiting someone in Japan, we don't have street names. It might be difficult for you to imagine in America. So it's, uh, it's really a help to find a way to when you, you visit someone. So normally what happens is you call your friend and they say, okay, so uh, get off at this and so and so station and you walk straight for five minutes and you find a bank on the right corner so you turn right at the corner and after maybe a couple of blocks you will find your gas station and turn left and so and so it goes like that and actually um, this kind of things really influence the way technology develops fax machine became very popular in japan in the uh, uh, 80s while in America it was not that popular for quite a while. And in fact, one of the reasons why fax machine became so popular in Japan was so um, people started using it for sending maps. So instead of checking map from Yahoo map kind of thing, so sending map by fax became very uh, popular and that uh, increased the production of uh, copying machine, no, fax machines and then the price came down, so more and more people start using it like that. And in case of mobile phones, so what's, what people do now sometimes is, okay, so you are visiting someone and you get lost. You call the person and say, well, I don't know where I am. And then your friend might say, okay, so show me where you are. So you just use your mobile phone, your camera, and get the, the image of the surroundings and send it to, to the person. And then he or she would say, okay, so I see this building, so it, it must be some here, there. And then from there, and so on. So this camera has some kind of strange but practical usage. And then also in, with Japanese mobile phone, um, Practically with almost any mobile phone, we have a sort of pro word processing software. And sometimes, like in this case, this is a mobile phone from Sony, it, it has also kind of artificial intelligence capability. And you might wonder why. And this is one reason why Japanese mobile phone became so well developed in a short time. And the reason is, um, if you're, uh, say you live in an English-speaking country, 
when you write email or you have make this address, what you need is just alphanumerics and you can manage. But in Japanese, we are using, mixing uh, Japanese characters, Japanese alphabets, Chinese characters, alphabets, and of course, numerics. And so, even while Japanese, in fact, is a phonetic language, the uh, Chinese character is based on meanings. So it's a kind of complicated issue to explain. But in Japan, um, the same combination of Chinese characters, someone's name, might lead to different way of reading, different way of converting into Japanese alphabet or Roman characters. So to have an address book or mobile phone, so someone's name and telephone number, uh, the mobile phone has to have a word processing software so that it understands the possible way of combinations of Chinese characters converting into Japanese characters or alphabets or the other way around. The same with sending email. So it, using Japanese means you have to have a word processing software to send an email or to um, make the address book, to prepare an address book. So that's the reason why Japanese mobile phone started from the beginning, in a way, as a computer. It has to be a computer. And if it's once it's a computer, then you can add other features. So and this kind of cultural issues um, influence the technical, say, um, possibilities and necessities. And, oh. Well, so we can now have video clips and also some cameras, some mobile phones come with GPS, global positioning system. Already with some kind of mobile phones, uh, which is called PHS, so the, because the, uh, the area that each server covers was fairly small, it was uh, already possible to make certain kind of commercial services like um, it is called push media, but so for example, uh, the, uh, some service providers can give you the kind of advertisement of the restaurants nearby, knowing that you must be in certain area. So that was already there several years ago. And now this global positioning system, like uh, the car navigation system uh, is based on, uh, comes with some kind of mobile phones. So this uh, makes it possible to have more accurate, for example, this kind of commercial services, and also make it possible to uh, may use it for some sort of certain kind of games, for example. So like orientating, or so you treasure hunting, outdoor, things like that. And because the uh, memory is getting cheaper and uh, larger, so some mobile phones come a uh, very considerably large memory and for example, with uh, mobile phone from Sony, because it's from Sony, so some comes with a very good speaker and you can store songs and you can use it as something like iPod. So you use mobile phone as a kind of Walkman. It's a little bit heavier, so I, don't, I didn't buy it, but that's also possible. And you can also download games and then store those games and play it while you, uh, uh, offline. So that's the reason why many people are using mobile phones, for example, on trains as, uh, to spend their spare time. Because it also means that uh, you don't have to pay anything for your connection if you have your uh, games on your mobile phone. And just, so in that sense, a mobile phone can be uh, used as some pocket game machines. So instead of use, uh, carrying mobile phone and Nintendo pocket kind of things, you can use this as a game machine. And of course, you can also use other programs. And there are many kind of, say, uh, free or public domain services programs you can download from the website. And also, when it comes to games or some maybe some other contents in future, so 3D objects can be animated in real time. 
because basically mobile phone uh, supports Java 3D, which means, um, in, I mean, theoretically, something like a uh, worm or sort of things, having this virtual environment on your mobile phone uh, is possible. Actually, Sega uh, supported, um, provided with a virtual character in 3D, and it was uh, to appear on mobile phone. Uh, for a short time, we saw it. I don't know what happened it <laughs> after that, to do it after that. But anyways, that's one thing possible. And as I said, so image processing is becoming popular because as many people now use mobile phones with camera um, installed, so they want to create more interesting images. And this is very, as I said, uh, it's kind of a mobile phone version of what in Japanese is called pre-club, print club. So these uh, small stickers. And also with video as well, now you can add subtitles to your video clip. <laughs> so imagine, shoot three minutes video clip, add some subtitle, and you can send it to friends. <laughs> so that's what we, we can do now. And so stereoscopy is also possible. And to support all these features, uh, the mobile phones have to have long durable batteries. And uh, until maybe several years ago, that was a problem, but now, so this is much better. And also, uh, if you go to any uh, 24 hours open convenience stores, they have this kind of extra uh, tentative batteries uh, you can use if you run out of battery. And so then what do we have on mobile phones as content? The, uh, the reason why Japanese mobile phones, for example, iMode, has been very successful is it's very easy to use it um, to create and, how would say, um, to, to offer the service on mobile phones because the, it is a kind of simple, simple, not very simple, but the compact version of HTML which is used to create uh, these websites on mobile phones for example, for eye mode. So if you know HTML and you make it uh, in a sm very small um, size that can be accommodated on mobile phones and for some uh, kind of um, basics needed to, uh, be, to make it be sh shown, so you can make your own mobile HTML site, website. And many uh, these days, um, public, the internet providers offer this service by having this server area that you upload your content there and it can be accessed by mobile phones from many people. And you can also register your website and if your web website is, becomes popular, then you will have many links. So, and on, also, Many people, the kind of normal users, offer the search engines and the kind of links that they find in, found interesting on mobile phones. So that's the way people find the uh, interesting mobile phone contents. And yeah, I brought some magazine here. This is a mobile phone magazine, and you can find this kind of magazine on supermarkets and they are weekly, and there are several of them. So you can see how popular now this culture is. And what you are seeing here, it's very small, so... Uh, um, this is an artist site on mobile phones. So not only artists, but also critics are here. Akira Asada, who is a critic, philosopher, Art curator. So he's also invited to uh, write an essay here. And let's see. This is the yeah. This is the top part, and this is the rest. So you can see uh, well-known illustrators, uh, musicians who also do graphics. Hajime Tachibana, who used to be a uh, musician and now uh, organizes his own a website inviting many artists and designers. So these people have their own sites. And if you go through this um, mobile phone index, you can find these uh, projects. 
and here, this this one is a project done by a media artist, internationally well-known media artist Toshio Iwai, uh, named Tenorion. And I can explain it later. But uh, so he had been um, doing this kind of work that uh, people can have say lay dots on this matrix, and then this array of, of dots can produce music. So he did it in a kind of room size installation uh, with um, pian MIDI piano, inviting Ryuichi Sakamoto. And he did it uh, for Sims, uh, so it's now part of Sim tunes. And he did it for this um, uh, game, small game machine. And then eventually, it went on mobile phones. So with on mobile phones, you can using these um, keys, you can I'll say um, put the uh, press the dots on the uh, screen, and then because uh, say uh, according to this arrangement of the dots, uh, the you can enjoy your own music, you can compose music. So. See if I can. Show you some of the contents, for example. Nothing really special, I just. <laughs> for example, this is a small GIF animation that someone has uploaded. the best way. Um, <laughs> I don't know what to do. So there are many different contents and um, like games, animations of course. And let's see. Oof. Maybe we can connect to this site. For example, this is a project done by an, a designer, a graphic designer, uh, I, I know. And it is in Japanese, so you wouldn't be able to read. But uh, this is a site um, that people can use, what is this called, Tompa letters. This is uh, um, what is called the last remaining hierographic language found uh, in China in the western part of China. And so there, uh, at this, in, among the tribe, so they use these philographic symbols to be combined and uh, make some sentence or meanings. So this designer uh, created a site that you can combine these symbols by yourself and send it to other people. Let's see. Um, There are samples that, and three. Uh, here, uh, it, it says that yeah, I want to see you smiling all the time. And uh, this is uh, this. Celebrating someone's the, uh, the birth of someone's baby, uh, one of the users. I'm trying to see there's a uh, nice section that you can, in fact, try it. Yeah, so you will see this kind of image on, on your mobile phone. And um,
And you can even change it to kind of anime mode to make it more kind of funny looking. I'm just trying to remember. Where was it? Oh, this is that. And um, let's see. Uh, there's a website for PC, and uh, that was where what I was using. Anyway, so. So here, what you see is, uh, now we are seeing on the uh, laptop, but this is designed in such a way that these letters can be shown on the mobile phone screen. Like this. So you can just scroll the screen and you can see uh, this is a part of the kind of folklore uh -huh, here. For example, you can even change it smaller, some small letters, or you, you can change it to, to kind of anime style or bring it back to calligraphic style. And if you use this service, then you can send this email to your friends. So this is one of those artist site. Um, I, I have difficulties in connecting this, but oh. But you can see there are many uh, contents. In fact, for example, I found a nice site on science education, which was created by high school students, kind of astronomy club of a high school. So they are offering this uh, um, educational site for children with illustrations like uh, how the uh, Earth turn, rotates around the uh, sun kind of things. and. Uh, for example, this uh, this eye lawyer. This is a let's. I wonder how can I do this? This is a mobile uh, lawyer on your mobile phone. So if you're in trouble, you connect, and there is a kind kind of consultation service. You um, choose from your menu. For example, how much do I have to pay for for this kind of the insurance kind of things, and you get the answer, and. There are some, for example, even some timetable for ferry boats that someone uploaded, or some sites for those people who suffer from incurable disease, and there are many um, contents. And then another thing is, mobile phone is a very personal item, and in fact, so I have. This one thing that I got from someone, this is a kitty chan, Hello Kitty. And this is the uh, Japanese chess. And so of course, the mobile phone itself comes with uh, different uh, styles, design colors, but people try to make it uh, say personal in many different ways. And this is something I also found from the website. So just even kind of site to offer you different paintings on mobile phones. Of course, having this uh, cover on mobile phones is international. I think it's the, the earliest one I, I saw was in from Finland, and then of course it became popular in Japan, and it's popular here as well. And for example, here this is from Kyoto. So some people want to have their mobile phones match to their kimono, kind of classic style. So there's some uh, artist studio uh, where they offer this special service of making this different artwork. And another big culture in Japan is, is this keitai straps. <laughs> Have you ever heard of this kind of things? So having something like this, so attached to your mobile phone, 
is very popular. And if you go to a, a shop, either to this mobile phone shop or some other places, you will see really, literally thousands of these kind of things. And of course, there are all sorts of characters. And if you like this um, old uh, Japanese chambara fencing kind of TV program, you can even have that actor uh, to, to, to travel together with you. I'm not interested in, or say Gundam kind of robots, or say Chinese characters, or bean dogs, whatever. And all sorts of things like here, um, the, in the middle, this, this is the post pet um, strap. Uh, post pet is designed by media artist Kazuhiko Hachi. It's very popular uh, email software, and the characters are very successful. And so let's see. This one is from a TV animation, Korean animation. It's also done by an artist that I know. And uh, these are also popular characters. Uh, this is from Doko de Muisho, another very popular uh, character on Sony PlayStation and also uh, mobile phones as well. These are the characters. And this is from uh, Bikri Mouse. This is a kind of cultural game on PlayStation 2 that two people can collaborate to paint together. And this is also done by the, the same artist, Toshio Iwai, as a collaboration with uh, two other artists, illustrators. And I, I found this uh, Kitty-chan series <laughs> from the website. So I'm putting this uh, Japanese, Chinese, uh, 12 animals you know, representing 12 years. The uh, Hello Kitty can appear as mouse or tiger or a dog or this, and you can buy it from the website and also the um, recommend this to friends. And I can imagine some people would say, uh, start buying this to, to have this complete set of 12 animals. And if you as a sporty person, so this is for surfers. So this, these are the miniature fins for surfing. Oh, no, no, uh, scuba diving. And this, it's too small, but this is uh, for baseball fans. Uh, I can see New York Mets, Yankees. So this is a t-shirt. Uh, what is a t-shirt, what do you call? The shirts uh, from each baseball team. And <laughs> of course, all kind of food. Uh, if one wants to have a kind of funny taste, or sort of pizza, or hamburg, hamburg sets or Chinese food. And these are more elderly people. And this might go well with kimono, uh, this, these things. And to the right, these are, what you call, these are Japanese Buddhist, uh, I know, rosario, this, you know, for prayer, the bees for praying. And it's interesting to think, if you imagine someone who carries this with mobile phone. So if he or she goes to a temple, she, is she going to stay and start playing like this with mobile phone? I mean, I think that's a rather strange uh, way of using this. And of course, all sort of injuries. And here, for example, you can buy uh, earrings so other accessories that would match your keta strap. So you can have this coordination. And these are jewels for your mobile phones. And it comes with some bells, so you can enjoy the combination of bell, uh, bells, the sun, and the um, gemstones, jewelry. And yeah, here, if you love dogs, these are kind of jewelry for dogs with a dog footprint. And also you can have a perfume. This is an atomizer. So you can have carbon crime or all sorts of famous perfumes to go with your mobile phone. 
And this is something which is quite funny. This, uh, these are the uh, Keitai straps or mascots for couples, uh, for two people. Um, here, so this is a combination of two hearts, and if you put them together, which means you, so you put your mobile phone the, and your partner's mobile phone together, then this, uh, these hearts start singing, I love you. <laughs> and also, I mean, I think might be start flashing. And this one, so let's see. Um, so actually, it seems I need to close it. So this is the show the website for net shopping that where you can buy all sorts of these straps. And here comes. Uh, do I have the sound connection? The sound can I? Oh, okay, so this here. So yeah, this is for example the uh, the pair, a set of small dogs uh, for the uh, as for, for mobile phones. And if you um, put these dogs together, then what happens is well, we can listen to that. Yeah, so this is quite crazy. <laughs> and it can be bears. And this is something I was rather surprised. Um, this uh, miniature cat wears two earrings. And like you can see it from here. So two people, uh, each person, um, how to say, touches one of those earrings. And then uh, they are supposed to kiss. And because this uses this very weak electric current, so when the, the electric current goes through, then this cat um, gets, uh, start uh, growing like red, and it starts shouting here. It says, I love you, I love you. <laughs> it's funny because uh, actually my former student once made a kind of artwork, artwork using this same principle. And there are some other uh, artists who use that. So uh, here, yes, here you see the cat growing red. So uh, my former student did such a work that if you um, touch a kind of column, um, sort of stand with your one hand, and the other person does the same, does the same and you shake hands, then something you see on the screen would start changing according to the way uh, how, how say this uh, electric current goes through. And I showed it two years ago in Kobe, and this was very, which is very interesting because I could see that the uh, uh, people, for example, a family 
came there and all three kids and parents uh, tried to um, shake their hands to see how it works. Or the, even the very funny experiences which, uh, which sometimes happened was in Japan, in elderly people don't shake hands very often. And I could see that the uh, rather old lady came with a uh, husband and she insisted that, that they should you know, shake hands. And her husband was rather reluctant in doing that, but she was very happy when uh, he finally kind of agreed to do that. And uh, I could see that happen, happening several times. And I thought that the, uh, kind, that kind of artwork project can really uh, have a change the way people feel to each other. Because I could imagine that a lady might have been thinking that um, envying young people, you know, walking hand in hand and uh, wanted to have a chance to <laughs> propose it to her, to her husband and the, uh, such an artwork can do it. But anyway, so here, so <laughs> the mobile, a mobile phone is meant to be a communication tool. But something like this, uh, those, these, um, uh, stri um, what in Japanese very often called mascot, something like that, this uh, strap for mobile phones uh, functions as a communication media itself. So it's not just a kind of attachment to mobile phone, but it has already become a, by itself a communication tool. For example, in this case, very clearly. And on this website where they market these things, what they say is here, for example, maybe you can't tell it to her or to him, but you can tell it through this, through these dogs or bears, like that. So here, this accessory for the mobile phone is used, is meant to enhance your communication and open a new communication channel. And actually, even these more normal sort of things, maybe not this religious moment, for example, this pizza, for example, they serve in a way as a kind of small item to personalize your mobile phone, to make it more familiar, more like yours, but also it helps to um, promote communication with other people. Because you, you have, if you have some funny uh, Keita strap, mobile strap, then st uh, your friends will start asking, so where did you get it? What is that? And then it makes your, your conversation more smoothly. So it's really interesting to see that in case of mobile phone, so this is something um, to, for used for telecommunication. And usually because these are here, of course maybe it's possible, but these are connected here, attached here. So you wouldn't maybe even send the um, photo of your, the, your the straps. So while a mobile phone is to be used as for telecommunication to talk to someone uh, who is not in the same, who doesn't share the same physical space, now in Japan the mobile phone is being used to communicate with someone who is next to you, like uh, enjoying game together, like we saw from the photo on the train, or to show the uh, new acquisition of your funny mobile strap and then talk about that. So this became a kind of item tool for communication or to um, encourage communication or, or say, we can imagine even some boys want to have this to talk to girls, you know, that kind of situation. So originally, I remember when I first bought mobile phones, how, where was it? In, so mobile phone was considered as a tool for business people and just black, of course, heavier, and nothing like this. Now it has changed because people started uh, discovering many different ways of using that, including this non-telecommunication communication. And what I'm interested in here is to analyze why this kind of change or this kind of 
uh, development or extension of the use of mobile phone took place. And here, there's one explanation. So, uh, of course, this is a modern one, but this uh, comes from a tradition. Maybe some of you have heard of this word, netsuke. If you uh, check from eBay, for example, you will find many of them. And here what you say, see here is um, this, something like a small box, is a traditional kind of um, carrier, container for medicine in old Japan. So people carried the medicines they needed in such a small container of this size. And because this Japanese kimono, there's no pocket. So just no, no, no pocket. So these kind of things were to be worn like this uh, under the belt. So they attach it to the belt of the kimono. And not to make it stable, to stay there, not so uh, to make it slip down. So they needed something as a stopper. And that is this, how, how these small things function. So you have this um, container hanging actually inside, because the uh, Japanese uh, belt are, the, uh, are more, uh, much wider than this kind of Western belt. So this can be there. And then from there, you see uh, this small part, uh, which is called netsuke, to keep it in the place. And also, if you want to, you need to use the uh, medicine, then you just pull it, and you can pull this container out from your kimono, from under your sash belt. And some of them are very um, simple, like here. So this is a kind of seashell wrapped with some nice clothes. These are still used. Uh, some people like uh, making these things as hobby, and or some kind of masks or small mascots, whatever. But then it is turned into a kind of art form by itself, a miniature sculpture. And that's the reason why you find so many what is called netsuke, for example, on eBay, because there are collectors. And it's very small, tiny. And it has some kind of, say, um, restriction in the form so that uh, it wouldn't break easily or it wouldn't stack uh, with a kimono or something like that. But there are many uh, the varieties in this netsuke. And in fact, this, this kind of thing also served as a very important um, fashion item in Japanese history. So it's like, uh, well, so let's see, uh, the uh, neckties or tie pins in Western equivalent, probably, or necktie pins or caps buttons, something like that. Because these are things so small, but uh, can be, say, designed in many different ways. So it showed your own taste, or it also served as, in case of these things, so to launch some conversation or some, uh, to also to show your taste, you know, see like that. So here, what we see is uh, this uh, such thing like uh, miniaturization in case of Netsuke to make this a uh, very small sculpture and appreciate and use it as a communication tool and also kind of to, well, the uh, personalization of, well, in the old days, this kind of uh, pill box and now mobile phones. This is uh, something as a tradition that continued in Japan and became as a kind of big fashion of uh, mobile phone straps. And that is, I think, also related to the fact that mobile phone is considered as something very close to what you wear, to your skin. Because when it came to Netsuke, so it is something really attached to, kimo to your skin almost. Because in case of Japanese kimono, kimono is rather sort of loose. It doesn't fit very tight like this. But because uh, this uh, uh, pill box and small netsuke were to be tucked into the under, the sash belt, it was something that you felt very close 
to yourself, to your body. And also it was related to kind of Japanese culture um, to show one's taste in a kind of very small detail. And I will later come to this issue uh, when talking about uh, the textile. Um, so not as a kind of overall uh, jacket or something, of course it's a part of that, but this kind of very small thing um, helped uh, as a important, small but important item. And so this is interesting, in fact, so these days some people in fact read these straps uh, as a netsuke and some people even call it. So this shows how when new technology like mobile phone uh, comes into the, uh, our life, the kind of old tradition or way of thinking comes back and starts a new way of being represented, being used in combination with a new technology in case mobile phone. So, uh -huh. and when it comes to this mobile phone being so close to you, I'd like to show you some video. Yeah, some of you might have seen it in my, in my previous video. But this was seen from Shibuya, a uh, very busy street thing in Tokyo. And there are big screens, three big screens there, one is really huge. And uh, one can see the ad advertisement of mobile phone here, for example, their phone, very often. Well, sometimes when I am in Tokyo, I go there, I sit down and uh, shoot video because sometimes I find it quite amazing images there. Sometimes even these uh, three screens are synchronized to the show here, in, in this case, uh, the music video. Uh, music video. interesting to see that while the music video is shown, sometimes you see the uh, news uh, in the day. And there. It is very in a multimedia environment. As each, uh, you can hear look at the sound from each screen. When a girl takes such a t-shirt, so she's actually moving from.
also show you. Um, サイズは一緒なんだけど、絵のが白黒だから、これはあと全部画像がちっちゃくなっちゃう。Sorry that camera is not stable. So this is the uh, yeah this is for Edward two years ago. So so we were checking the uh, download site for music. Now just downloading. Yeah, unfortunately, my, my com mobile phone is not so great in terms of sound quality. So that's one reason why this model is not so popular among young people. So, anyway, so this is the uh, music download site. <laughs> so these are commercial services and uh, as we saw already so gift animation is possible so there are commercial sites and also the, uh, those sites um, offered by, by people <laughs> and artist as a hobbyist. Mm -hmm. 
So what kind of image do you have as a screensaver is another kind of issue to personalize your mobile phone. And because this is also kind of a topic of conversation very often. So that is one reason why this kind of service is very popular. Actually, this magazine is a special issue on the screen savers, so the free screen savers. And here, so what we are checking here was a site we found by a group of people, not really professional, but so they are say um, using this, doing this project that um, how say each person, each of them would. Uh, upload an image and then some text. So they are using mobile phone as a, as a very, uh, kind of say uh, tool for storytelling, interactive storytelling. So they continue this uploading story and image and they, they continue like that. And uh, people um, check and uh, enjoy, enjoy them. So something which used to be, how to say, um, taking place on a kind of very personal basis, like people exchange the illustrations, enjoy the, uh, telling the stories, or say in Japan, say uh, there's this comic market where people go and uh, publish their own comics and exchange, sell, buy, things like that. Now the, it, that kind of activities are also taking place in mobile phones. But, But with all these features now we have on mobile phones, uh, more and more things are moving uh, as a possibility uh, on mobile phones as a platform. So one of those things is to the use of mobile phone as a um, platform for database retrieval and even as a kind of spatial uh, interface for database because uh, if we combine GPS, if we, the, uh, we use this GPS function on mobile phones, uh, when we walk around in the city or say other places, so it's possible to um, find where they, where you can find the kind of information related to the specific site. So, okay. This is a project done by Scott Fisher and his graduate student at Keio University. And here, they are using this very clumsy uh, GPS system. It was before this uh, GPS mobile phone became available. But so here, what they are doing is by combining this DP GPS system and iMode telephone, make the whole envir environment as a kind of database. So this guy, the poor grad student, it's very heavy, is working around with the GPS system and the mobile phone. And when he comes to a spot where there's some information sort of buried in the environment, then he'll see it on his HMD that there's something there. And then he, if he chooses to uh, retrieve that information, then uh, you can hear he has this uh, iMode mobile phone on his hand. So he, he can send this information to the uh, database server using his iMode phone. And through this uh, mobile phone connection, he uh, will see here, for example, what kind of the insects uh, live on these trees and their life. Up here, but for example, there was a project done by a group of Australian artists from uh, University, I think Melbourne, several years ago, maybe five years ago or so, where they did, how did they um, experiment to, to turn the uh, kind of cityscape into a musical environment. So by walking around in the city with the GPS system 
and carrying actually the uh, drawer, the suitcase. So the, the way they kind of walk around would uh, be, how to say, uh, calculated by the computer as a combination of the, the kind of place, the spot, and the, uh, the movement, because the wheels came with the uh, sensor, so that they get the music or s sound or um, the information about the city according to where you, they were. That's it. <laughs> He's totally exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but so this is only three years ago or so, and what they are trying to do there is almost possible with the mobile phone that we have today, because now we the mobile phone comes with a GPS system, and instead of say carrying this very heavy battery, so the uh, mobile phone itself is quite uh, comes with a durable battery. Of course, uh, you need to find out how to do this. Uh, mixed reality screen kind of things. But here, what they experiment is to have this um, a database around, around you. And a mobile phone with, for example, this DP, GPS system can be used like that. I mean, in your future, or maybe quite soon. So that's one possibility that we have. Um, shall we take some break? And, uh-huh. Uh, can I bring back, uh, can I have this computer back? Another thing is, this is also from Shibuya, and uh, maybe this is even more advanced these days, probably. So here, um, it's possible to send a message from your mobile phone to this big screen. So this means you can use this huge screen as your own message board. Like if you are uh, supposed to meet someone there, it's a very well-known meeting spot, and you get lost, something like that, you can use this as to, to find your friend. So this has a combination, conversation between a very small mobile phone, mini screen to a huge screen is also taking place. And Mm. In this case, you were, they were just sending, but that's actually a, a project that took place three years ago or so. Uh, they did it at the uh, Christmas Eve or something like that. They instead not using sensor, but they had a video camera. Actually, they had a video camera, and they show people walking around there, crossing the street in real time. So they used that video camera uh, that in such a way that the people were invited to uh, call someone who is there, and the camera, the video camera, we will try to find that person calling from nearby. And then they say, are you there? And this kind of thing happened. I meant, I meant, sensor, I meant, do the, um, I meant like um, people, you know, they can write like obscenities or something up there. Like, ah, they, yes, censorship. Okay, yes. Censorship, like, can they? Yeah, I'm sure they're they doing that. Okay. Yes, okay. yeah, okay. otherwise it would be a problem. Yeah. It is funny what yesterday the uh, people from, someone from the Van Gogh TV was saying. Were you there? I was just uh, in the, there in the beginning. You were there, and the, the Van Gogh TV. So, yeah, so they did this uh, live broadcasting uh, very early. When was it? Uh, 90. Uh, uh, sorry? Van Gogh TV. Um, I saw their live broadcasting at Ars Electronica in 91 or 92, and the uh, documenta was the year after, something like that, 93, 94, something like that. So they did this kind of thing that the people can uh, speak anything and can be broadcasted. And so, they, because they, they couldn't. They threw the people out afterwards, after they had said yes. something, yeah. and then they threw them out. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, because they couldn't do it. Of course, they can't, couldn't censor. That. And anyway, so they are a kind of alternative artist group. So maybe they also like that idea. So if anyone says something, anything, and which is not appropriate, then they would kick them, the person out from the studio and have this big kind of uh, banner or what censored. 
on, on the screen. Yeah, in, case, in this case, I think maybe there should be some kind of time lag because of the censorship. And anyway, so they have enough people appearing. They must have some system to see what kind of message uh, then they select, make the selection. Okay, so um, shall we take a break? And then after that, um, I will continue or say, proceed to the next topic about clothes as media which is something different uh, with, about, with, uh, from the mobile phone. Okay. So, when shall we start? What is the turning like mm -hmm. Okay, 50 minutes or so? The break, 10 minutes? Well, yeah, 10 minutes. Okay, really? Yes? Yeah. Go ahead. 10, 10, 10 minutes break.